Okay, so one more example with the cost would be this one, uh, the open top rectangular box with a volume of 250 centimeters cubed. It defines the width of the box for us. It has to be five. The cost is $2 per centimeter squared for the base and $1 per centimeter squared for the side. So, you know, the fact that it has no top tells you that we don't need, um, you know, to worry about that. And then, you know, uh, you can imagine why the sides don't have to be made of as strong material as the bottom, or of course the bottom wouldn't have to contain whatever's in the box. So that the bottom is often a little bit more expensive than the sides. What is the minimum cost for making the box? So once again, we are trying to find the minimum cost is the function we're ultimately trying to minimize. The cost you can tell here is proportional to the surface area of the object. And, you know, I can kind of tell that because I can see, you know, it, it's not charging me per centimeter cubed. It's charging me per centimeter squared, right? I'm making the cardboard or whatever it is. So th this kind of lets you know what function is going to be related to the cost. So if you want to imagine here the surface area of this object, right? So the surface area of a uh, rectangular prism is, you know, for a, for a general rectangular prism, let's say the base is the length and the width, and then we have the height. So there are two length times widths, right? That would be the top and the bottom. There are two length times heights. That would be the front and the back. And then there are two width times heights. That would be the two sides. So there are six surfaces, and those are all of the six surfaces. Now, in our case, there are a few, you know, uh, you know, sh shortcuts we could take here because in our case, the surface area, well, for, for one, it's an open top box, right? It says up here it's open top, which implies that we don't actually need uh, to account for the top when we're, when we're doing our calculations. So length width plus two length height plus two width height. And, you know, the other thing is that it tells us that the width of this box is, you know, set at five centimeters. So that gives us even more information. We can replace all those W's with five. So we get 5L plus 2LH plus 10H, right? And there I'm just doing the 2 times W to make 10. So here's the surface area of the box, right? And um, again, you notice that I have two variables, so I'm not ready to start uh, taking the derivative or any such thing like that. But uh, I can, um, what I can do is, you know, use our constraints and see if I can't figure out some way of, you know, eliminating one of those variables. Now, I'm also not actually asking about the surface area in this question. I'm asking about the cost. So let's just let's just recall for a second that the surface area is composed of a bottom, uh, a front and back, and then a, a, a you know a left and right side. So here is the left and right side. Okay, I'm just going to color code this just so we can kind of keep track of it. So here's the left and right side. The 2LH is the front and the back. Okay, so we'll give that a color, front and the back, a color. And then this is the bottom, okay? The 5L is the bottom, okay? And again, I'm not doing a top, which is why it does not say, you know, 2LH, it's just 1LH. Now, in my question, okay, it said the $2 per centimeter squared for the base, so that's the bottom, and $1 per centimeter squared for the sides. So the cost function, right, when I go to do the cost function, I'm going to take all the parts that I have above. I'm going to multiply each part by its cost. $2 there, $1 there, $1 there. Now, of course, multiplying by 1 is not really that important, but I just want to have it here in your notes so that you have them. And we get that this can, is C is equal to 10L plus 2LH plus 10H. Okay, and this is now the, the equation that it is we're trying to uh, minimize. Okay. The constraint in this equation is a, is a function of the volume. It says the volume has to be 250 centimeters cubed. So V equals 250. Now, you know the volume of a box is equal to LWH. And by the way, it doesn't matter that the box is open topped because the volume is the same whether the top is there or not, right? So we can go and we can now say volume equals length height times 5 since, of course, the width we know 
to be equal to 5. This means that, you know, 5LH equals 250, and that L, for example, is equal to 50 over H. And how I'm getting that is I'm simply dividing H and 5 over to the other side. So this now gives me the substitution that I need in order to sub into the original equation uh, and, and get it isolated, right? So, so sorry, the constraint was there. And here, sorry, I should be, I just uh, put it in the wrong spot. So isolate the variable, we isolated L. Okay, so we found a way to express L using H. This means I can go back to my cost equation, which remember is up here. So here's my uh, cost equation, except now I can take every L and replace it with an H. So I can create a function that only, you only need to tell me H and I can spit out the cost uh, afterwards. So we get 10 times 50 over H plus 2 uh, 50 over H times H plus 10 H, right? That, that would be uh, our equation there, just dropping in 50 over H for L every time we, uh, we saw an L, right? So just looking above. And the, the reason this step is so important is because now it's a function in terms of one variable. So I'm going to clean it up, C of H equals, uh, here I get 500 over H, here I get 100, because the H and H cancel, and then 10H, right? And this is, uh, this is the equation that I am now interested in uh, minimizing, okay? So state the domain of this function. The domain of this function is, uh, you know, all we know about the function is that the volume has to be 250. So if you go back and think about the volume, L is 50 over H. There Again, there really is no restriction in terms of how tall the box could be. You could always make the box narrower to, uh, you know, to make it taller. And you could always make it shorter to make it longer. So there really isn't a restriction in terms of what values of H would not be allowed. So again, we're going to use an open-ended interval. We know H cannot be negative. We can't create this uh, box with a negative height, but any there is no limit to how tall uh, this box could be. Okay, so now we go to the optimization part. We know that we are interested in any critical points. We're interested in the cost when we have a, a height of zero, uh, which, of course, we just go back up into our function. It's very simple to look at this function. If I sub in zero, I'm going to get 500 over zero which is undefined, so that's not going to be my answer. My other option is to look for C of a critical point. If I look at this function too, by the way, you can see that if I plug in a large value for H, this function just goes off towards infinity, right? Because 10H just continues to grow higher and higher and higher. So I'm not gonna find a minimum cost by putting in a high number for H. I'm gonna be looking for a critical point, not, a, not an extremely large number. So to do that, we're going to go back to the equation as, as last we had it, and we're going to take the derivative, and uh, you know, we're going to set it equal to zero and see what comes out. So here we got 500 times h to the negative 1. This becomes negative 500 over h squared, right? I'm just dropping the exponent and multiplying the exponent to the front. The 100 disappears, and then the 10h simply becomes 10. So we're looking at this equation. We're going to set this equal to 0 to find out when the tangent is flat. We get negative 500 over h squared plus 10. And of course, as usual, I want to get rid of that denominator. So I go 0 equals, I'm just going to move it to the other side, 10h squared minus 500, right? Simply multiplying every term by h squared. To finish this off, I get 500 equals 10h squared, which means 50 equals h squared which means h equals plus or minus uh, root 50, right? Root 50, okay? And uh, obviously I'm going to reject minus square root 50 since it is outside the domain I mentioned, okay? Now this derivative, okay, it, uh, you know, let's, uh, well, let's graph it and we'll, we'll just have a quick look. You know, we, at some point we would want to check that C of uh, positive root 50, so our critical point, is in fact a min, uh, is a min, 
how would we check that, right? We need to check. So, you know, I know root 50, square root 50 is, you know, equal to, you know, approximately 7.07, so something like that anyway. So what we would need to do is we would need to check C prime of 7 and C prime of 8 and make sure that we could prove that this is actually a minimum. What we're looking for is that C prime of 7 is negative and C prime of 8 is positive to show that it goes from decreasing to flat to increasing. So again, at this point, I'm just going to take my function over to um, the uh, GeoGebra and we'll just have a look at it so we can finish, uh, finish this up. So uh, I'll just change it to x for purposes of uh, the computer understanding what I mean. And this is our cost function. Okay, As you can see, our cost function grows without boundary the bigger we make x. So it doesn't make sense to make a very, very tall box or a very, very, uh, yeah, in this case, h or x is h, right? So we're not interested in making a tall box. We're not interested in making a very a short box where h is very short because, as you can see, the cost gets infinitely high if we want to make uh, the, the height very, very, very small. So we projected that we would find a minimum in this interval, and I think we have. So when we graph the derivative here, so derivative c, Spell it right. Derivative. I don't know what I did wrong there. Derivative. Okay, anyway, there's our derivative. Okay, now just to appreciate to see this a bit better, you can see I wanted earlier I asked us to check what is c prime of 7. And c prime of 7 you can see is negative. c prime of 8. Right, c prime of 8 is positive, whereas c prime of 7 is negative. Let me just quickly do something on this. c prime of 7, right? c prime of 7 is negative, c prime of 8 is positive. Therefore, right, our value, which remember is square root of 50, so this is our critical point, 7.07, uh, .07. that is the number that we suspect uh, should be the minimum. So we check c prime of uh, that c and we get zero, right? So it's a flat tangent. It goes from decreasing to increasing. We're very confident it's a minimum. If I go back and look now at this point, so C and capital C, you know, what's the cost there? Again, and I'll draw a tangent AC, and I see, uh, okay, so it's not me, right? I, I clearly did spell this right. I, I don't know, typing it too fast or something. capital. Okay, the, the tangent's flat. I'm looking at the minimum. I've found the ideal spot. I know it's a radius, uh, sorry, it's a height of 7.07 .07 or square root 50, and it, it corresponds to a cost of $241.42. Now, I want to go back, make sure I answer the question. The question says, what is the minimum cost for making the box? The question does not say anything about the dimensions, so to finish the question, I could say the minimum cost for making this box occurs when the height is equal to uh, square root 50. And I'm going to say approximately 7.07. .07, so h equals 7.07. .07. Uh, this is overkill, but and the minimum cost is uh, $241.42. $241.42. Uh, okay. Now, this uh, this is just it's important. You know, I wrote I wrote more than I needed to here, right? I don't actually need to write this as part of this answer, but it is important to just get in this habit of read what it says, make sure you actually give what it says uh, in the end. So the minimum cost to construct this box two hundred and forty one dollars and forty two cents. If you try to make the box taller, it will end up costing more. If you try to make the box shorter, it will end up costing more. So what we found here is the ideal number, the best possible way of making this box is to have a, a height uh, of root 50, which is 7.07. Uh, .07. .07. Okay, so hopefully these have been some help in terms of figuring out what to do with these optimization problems, and we're going to pick up uh, where you know we're going to pick up on the lesson. Uh, so we're we're done with lesson four, part two. 
when we come back on uh, Thursday, we're going to start working on part three, okay? So.